One of the main issues for any new business is how to name it. For Lisa and Lorraine, that was not a problem. Stolia was their grandma name, and she was not only their source of inspiration, but also they learned from her how to cook amazing Mexican salsas with very little resources. So when the time came to launch their business selling salsas, the decision of how to name it came very easy. They named it Estolias. We didn't want it to be look commercial like everything else you mm-hmm. see. It's out there because it's not. It's personal. Uh, it's named after our grandmother, and we wanted it to look beautiful. Actually. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. we wanted it to look like it tastes. But Estolias is much more than the brand for a delicious Mexican salsa. Let's find out what's the real purpose of this enterprise y cómo lo hicieron. Éxito. Success. Hábitos. Habits. ¿Cómo lo hizo? How do they make it? Descubra las costumbres y secretos de los triunfadores. Discover the habits and the secrets of those who have succeeded. Lisa and Lorraine, thanks for being with us here in Como Lo Hizo. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you. Very excited to be here. So when uh, we invite uh, the people to be in our podcast, uh, we send a letter and usually they answer with the acceptance. To be honest, nobody has declined so far, so we are 100% successful. <laughs> and we are very, you know, honored for that and happy about it. So when you answer our invitation, uh, you said something that really caught my attention. And it was when you say, we want to share our story and the good, bad, and the ugly of being an entrepreneur. Yes. It, there is a lot. There's, so, there's a little bit of everything. Let's talk in, a, in a abstraction about being an entrepreneur. So what what is the good, the bad, and the ugly? The good is that it's your dream and you're pursuing something that you have passion for, that you want, that you know can make a difference, can change somebody else's lives. Um, the bad is well the hurdles you have to go through and Tons. and things that you don't you don't know and it's it's a learning process um and when you find people that help you along the way then that's great and as things go on you know it's it's kind of like the universe is there for you mm-hmm. and puts the right people in front of you like today yeah like exactly. Today. exactly exactly and you don't want to talk about the ugly <laughs> that is the ugly. Oh, that's the no, ugly. The ugly is is the fact that there's times when you you think about, was I wrong to do this? Should I have not done this? Uh, people right, tell you you want to give up. I mean, you, you want to give up, and 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 you're thinking, you know, I'm I'm putting all my energy, and I'm kind of letting things go, and and it, is the money going to last until my dream, you know, comes to fruition? I mean, Absolutely. It's, it's it. You know, you want to give up along the way when when things get in the way. And not only that, but you have people like in your sometimes family, sometimes friends. Like, why are you doing that? What What are you trying to do? Or they're they're dismissive. They don't. They're they're not happy for you. It's almost like, you know, they have a dream, but they don't want to do it. It and so they kind of squash yours. But it's it's not about that. It's about us encouraging one another. You know, giving each other. Um, and, and like I said, encouragement, wanting the best for everybody and everybody to be happy. Yeah. And in this case, it's great because there's no one that encourages more than we encourage each other. Mm-hmm. So it's working true. together um, has just been amazing. It's something that we've always wanted to do. And Absolutely. it's just it's taken all these years to finally get to um, that level and and doing something that we w- both want to do, you know, a uh, uh, a company and giving back, so um, it's it's perfect right now. And we don't fight, which is nice because you know most family they fight with each other. We don't fight. <laughs> no, we, don't we don't fight. I'll just say I don't feel like talking right now. I'm getting off. They don't. Or she That's what she says. So I, I'm so, so I know. So you are not sisters. You are cousins. We're cousins. Right? Mm-hmm. All right. Our moms so are you sisters. don't fight. Okay. So and you have also a dual life because you are entrepreneurs and also you do something very special to help others. Yes. So that's amazing. It's the first time 
on the show that we are talking to people that has that dual, uh, how do you call it, enterprise, the for-profit yes. and the non-for-profit. So let's talk about the non-for-profit first. So tell me about Stolias, because Stolias, Stolias is the brand of your non-for-profit uh, salsas, correct? Yeah, yeah, that's the name of the brand. Uh-huh. And the, well, the actual salsas are called Salsa Saves Lives. That's okay. what we have our trademark on. And, and the brand, uh, the Estolias, is actually our grandmother's name. That's a beautiful name, by the way. So how everything started? Tell me about it. Oh, at the beginning or from the salsas? No, from the salsa. I mean, well, I mean, how do you evolve into having four kind of salsas that help different kind of, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Causes. Yeah, causes, um, yes. You can well, start off with that. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, we started because we're both part of an animal rescue. And when we used to bring uh, a salsa to some of our meetings, everybody loved it. So we were thinking about a way to raise some extra money at, at a big event that we do called Race for the Rescues. So we decided to bottle some salsa. So we bottled a couple of hundred bottles. We took it. People loved it. And then the the rescues started getting emails and phone calls. Where can I buy it? Where can I buy it? Mm -hmm. And so Lisa and I talked and we said, well, let's do this. Uh, let's do something and give back. And, and Lisa said, we have to have four flavors. I'm going to create four fabulous flavors, mm -hmm. which she did because she's an amazing cook. You know, nobody can do it like, she, like her except for Grandma Stolia. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and... Uh, So she came up with the new the other recipes, and we bottled it. We took it back to the same event that we we launched. You know, we introduced the year before, and it was a huge success. And it just so happens that um, the host at that time, uh, Patricia Lopez from Vista LA, took the salsa home with her, and she gave us a call and said, "We want to do a story on salsa yeah. saves lives, Estolias." And then it just, you know, it just there. it took off from there. So you you had the know how because you are you are like a private label, correct? Sa -sa yes, yes, we do that. We do productions, yes. correct? Yes, sir. So you do private label for different places, uh, restaurants, I imagine, or this yes. or different mm -hmm. companies, which is awesome. So you had that huge experience, and then you applied that experience to produce these four kind of salsas. To help different causes. Right. Because you had like the feeling or the urgency or need to give back to the community. Well, yes. Right. But like each one of those salsas is really near and dear to our heart. So we have the Verde that is for Alzheimer's. And my cousin, Lorraine, her father passed away from Alzheimer's. So that's really near and dear to us. My father, which is the Classica, is for leukemia. My dad uh, died of leukemia. And the... The piña is for fighting homelessness and hunger, and for a short period of time, I was homeless. So it's it goes through a little bit of everything, right? And the asado is for, for animal uh, to help animal rescues. So you were homeless for yeah a, for a short period of time. Mm -hmm. Short period of time in, in when I had my daughter. It was a long time ago. So and so I know what it's like. So you know what it's like. I definitely do. How did you come back into active uh, business life? Well, my aunt, which is her mother, helped me a lot. So it's it's a we're a real close family. So and now you went what up right? I mean you went from wherever you were yeah. to be homeless and the, then back into active you yes. know financial and you know a regular let's say life. Right. And right. That's, that's a beautiful. What, what do you learn most of being homeless? That you life can change in a second. Life can change in a second, and you don't even know what's happening. You don't even know what's what's. It's, yeah, it's strength. You have to have a lot of strength in order to endure that. And, and it could be for anybody, you know. It could be for anybody. An a top executive that makes six figures to, you know, the, the person at the restaurant. It, 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 it doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. You're always there at the edge that something can happen and mm -hmm. your life can change. So. Absolutely. Illness. Whatever, yeah. yeah. And, always. Mistake, whatever. It, yeah. yeah, it doesn't matter. You never know. Even you in a fire. Know. It's anything. You don't know yes. anything. Right now, before you were uh, you were producing the salsa for charity or for you call it salvan vidas. Uh, 
you were producing the salsas uh, in a private label. Yes. For how long before you launched the uh, salsa for uh, Salva, Salva Vidas? Five years, four or five years. I'm, I'm saying about five years. Five years. So mm -hmm. you are you successful in your private uh, business? Yeah, it's 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 nice. <laughs> it's nice. Yeah, because you because you know going to the point is that make something for profit or non profit probably requires the same procedures, the same you know process because you have to produce, you have to buy, you have to right. distribute it. So tell me what's the most important at, in, during the process because you have to come up with the idea, then you have to buy the or get the components, the ingredients. So why don't you walk us through the process of producing salsas? Okay, originally what we would do is we would rent a kitchen. They have like little culinary incubators. So people that have that are small or emerging businesses, you go and you rent it for a couple hours. So you have to know how to produce it, you know how to process it so that nobody gets sick. So we would do small batches and um, we got into Whole Foods. And that was a refrigerator process, a product. And then that wasn't really doing really well. So I came back and I did some restaurant. I, I would made some, we had chile, we had a frozen line, basically. So we had the chile verde, we had tamales, we had all that other stuff. And so we were doing that through a distributor. And then again, we right. came and, back and, and started doing this. And we had to get a co-packer because we couldn't keep up with the demand. So we started off doing it small. And it wasn't cost effective. It wasn't consistent because every time you get a different batch, the product comes out a little different. Right. So it, we needed more Different price also. Everything, everything. Yeah. So we had to keep it on a consistent basis. So we had to get a co-packer to help us along the way because they could produce bigger batches of stuff. Interesting. So then what happened? So you came with the idea, the concept. You came with the badges. You start distributing. Was everything was green and happy for you? You have some red lights. You have some mistakes. I, I had tons of mistakes. I didn't know what I was doing. I came in from a different industry completely, so I had no idea. What was your drive? Why did you do it? Why did you didn't you go like to, to work for, for a bank or whatever? You know. You know what? It was during the recession, like right after the recession. So it was like there was no jobs anyway. So I had to do something. <laughs> yeah, and, and I, none of we you're didn't. You're talking we didn't 2008. Have jobs. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, that's when we started yeah. emerge, like when it kind of had the ideas. And then in 2011 is when I started doing it full time. But it was, you know, always in the in the in my mind. Like I did a little bit of catering, and I was not a good caterer. Right, and terrible. Beca and because of the recession, um, really, kind of brought us together to do something together because we were in completely different industries. In which, which industry were you? A construction. Construction. So, construction. you know, you, so you turn into constructing salsas. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> now, you need capital. Did you get uh, somebody to finance, to bankroll your, your project? Originally, it was as we went along. Originally, it was like we, we'd find money because it was on a smaller scale. Mm -hmm. So, like, like some of the grocery stores would want two or three cases. Well, we could do that. You know, that wasn't that much. That you know, easy. we could do that product. So, so it was easy for us to do that, finance it. It's when we got the bigger stuff that it became a little bit more difficult. Where do you get the money? Well, well, we, we, we put it back into the company and then we've had some of our own. Mm -hmm. So so you never ask for venture capitalists no, or angel never. investor, no. nobody no. from the family beside you two it's girls. Just us. That's amazing. That's so, why I think it's been slower because had we had somebody behind us with deep pockets, we could have done this process a lot quicker. You so know? who was the designer for the labeling, the packaging, the jars? Who, who is the creative Lisa. person? So you are the marketing person. I guess. So what's the... <laughs> she, she's the designer. I do the marketing. Yeah. She, she does the recipes. So yeah. we kind of... We, it, you know what we what we do best yeah. is, is so what's what's out. the most important part in the design the, the the concept for you? I wanted it to look high end and pretty, authentic and authentic at the yeah. same time, like yeah. real. Like I didn't want it to be. Um, we don't. We didn't want it to be look commercial like everything else. You mm -hmm. see you it's out there because it's not. It's personal. Uh, it's named after our grandmother, and we wanted it to look. Beautiful, yeah, actually. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. We wanted it to look like it tastes. The most difficult part when you have a product and you want to do retailing is to get 
shelf space. Oh yeah, we don't. <laughs> yes, don't even oh, go there. Yes. Please, oh, no. please share with us your experience because many people want to. You know, I, I know that today they are working in products and they are dreaming to be in Whole Foods in 